It's the Last Stand Podcast. And here's your host, Brian Custer. That's right, The Last Stand, where we bring you the biggest names in the sport. I am Brian Custer, and joining me again on The Last Stand is a young man who's the former featherweight champion of the world. He is one of the top contenders now at 130 pounds. He is fearless. He is none other than Shakur Stevenson. Shakur, welcome back to The Last Stand. What's up, what's up, what's up? (laughs) It's great to have you back on, young man. All right, look, last time we spoke to you was last year. We saw you in the ring like last December. Give us some news. When will Shakur Stevenson be back in the ring? Um, we're looking at a date, um, probably like June. We should be back in. Uh, I'm Like I said, I'm, I've always been training. I'm still um, doing my thing, training, and I'm just ready to fight. So I think June, we should be back for sure, though. Now, you know, the last time we spoke, Shakur, uh, you said, hey, look, I'm going to be fighting the winner of the Frampton Herring uh, uh, of that fight. That's been pushed back to April because of Frampton injuring his hand. But all of a sudden, Oscar Valdez goes out and knocks out Burchell. Yes. And, and <laughs> he's now the, no, the new WBC champ. And he says, Shakur Stevenson is on my hit list. I hear he wants the smoke. So let's do it. My question to you is, which fight do you want more? Do you want the winner of the Frampton Herring or do you want Oscar Valdez? I want the Valdez fight uh, a lot more be- just because of the fact that Valdez, uh, I think he's the better fighter out of um, out of everybody else in the division. I think that um, he established himself as one of the top fighters and I feel as though the number one fighter in the division. So um, I, I want Valdez more for sure. But I think that, I think Valdez was a little excited after the fight. Like, I think that he was feeling good after his knockout. Um, I don't know if he really won the fight, but we, you know, our team's talking and we're going to see. Well, you know, that, like the old saying says, be careful what you ask for. Um, uh, it, do you see a possibility of you fighting both fights, getting Valdez and the winner of Herring Frampton as well? Yeah, that's actually the plan. Uh, getting both fights, actually, um, I don't know which one will be first. It's depending on what Valdez want to do. But honestly, I would rather fight Valdez first if I if I can. But I don't know if Valdez want to come straight off a of Brichel fight to a Shakur fight that quick. He might want to tune up fight in between. So um, it's all depending on Oscar Valdez. Who do you think is going to win that that Frampton uh, Herring fight? I think Jamel going to win. Um, but I think that Jamel uh, is planning on moving up to 135, so it'll be a vacant title anyway. Uh, how active will you be? Will Shakur Stevenson be this year? Uh, I should be pretty active. After June, um, I want to come right back, probably get back in, like, September. Um, as quick as possible, I want to be um, pretty active. I don't want to just be sitting on the sideline watching. That's not too fun for me, so I like to stay active. So you see yourself fighting twice this year? Yeah, I see twice this year, if not three times. If I can fight three times, I will. Um, so then realistically, tell me what are then your two fights you see yourself with this year? Realistically, I see um, a fight for probably, I don't know, probably like a tuna fight or something, and then Valdez or uh, Frampton and Aaron this year. And if um, realistically, it should be right after that, I'll fight whichever one. I don't, I wouldn't need like no in-between fight. I'll go straight from Valdez or Frampton or whoever to each other, so. How long do you see yourself uh, at 130, Shakur, before moving up to 135? Probably like two more years. I probably okay. got another me, like, um, I'm I'm a I'm a big like kind of fighter. Like I was I was next to Devin probably uh well like a couple of days ago I was with Devin and like me Devin not that much bigger than me like and he fight 135 and he's like a a big 35 too so he's not that much bigger than me and just like sizing it up and seeing like okay like I'm not that far from like 135 so are you foaming at the mouth 
to get to 135, considering there's so much talk about the lightweight division? Or do you see uh, the 130 pound division just as competitive? I see, I see, um, now I just see one guy at 130 um, that's really like a competitive, at the Valdez performance, as the, he put on that great performance that he put on. I think he put himself in the marks as the the man that I want to be. But um, like you said, uh, 135 is like the main division. So I'm really, I am going to be happy jumping up there, but it's going to be kind of weird being that them guys is all kind of big now. And I don't know if they still going to be there. That's the main thing. Shakur, you were quoted as saying, I'm the real boogeyman of boxing. One of the most feared fighters. Uh, tell me why. I just feel like, I had um, a lot of fighters don't really want to fight me. Like, I feel like I had opportunity to fight in big fights and I can't really get in them um, big fights because of uh, other fighters. Like, it's not me being the reason that I wasn't, I didn't have them big fights. Like, um, for example, you had Josh Warrington after my fight in March. We were supposed to make a big fight in May and uh, ended up, they ended up trying to throw me a little bit of money, um, basically trying to make me fight for pennies when I was a champion and he was a champion and it's a unification fight and I'm flying to his hometown and they trying to give me basically nothing. So uh, I ain't respect that. I think that that was like a, a duck or a way out for the fighter. And then you got Oscar Valdez. I was his mandatory at 126 for the uh, WBO title. And he said in an interview that I stay and fight uh, Josh Warrington and Leo Santa Cruz. But if I can't get them fights, I'm moving up. Um, and I was going to be his biggest payday. Um, I was going to be his biggest payday, and I was going to be – me and him was going to be a huge fight at 126, but he said it. he moved up. So, like I said, I had opportunity for big fights, and I, I haven't got the chance to get in them big fights because of the fighters, not because of me. So I just feel like uh, they find it a way out, and I feel like I'm, I'm a boogeyman. Um, one guy who we had on the show is primetime Chris Colbert. And I think you saw – his quotes on social media and he said he would love to fight you in fact i want you uh to hear what he had to say you're a bad boy you're a bad boy and he is a bad boy and me and him will be a hell of a fight but i'm going to take that victory i know that this is is it, it went by any means necessary i don't care about looking cute clean nothing it's win that's the only thing i know is win what's your response I mean, I feel like B.I. said what he's supposed to say. Like, at the end of the day, you're supposed to say that. Um, B.I. know what I'm built with. B.I. been in the ring with me several times. Uh, I knew B.I. since, like, a little kid. So it's, like, history behind this. We were supposed to fight in several different tournaments. Um, actually, I'll tell you a story about me and B.I., actually, because I, 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 don't, I don't forget things. But in, uh, in, like, Missouri, we was in Missouri at a ringside tournament. B.I. came in the uh, – he came into the weight room while I was checking my weight and he just started talking mad shit to me. He like, you suck. You're not that good. Da, 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 talking so much shit to me. So then I'm like, uh, but mind you, we're not even at the same weight class. I'm, I'm a little bit bigger than him at the time. So I'm like, uh, come spar me then. Like, I'm telling him, like, come spar me. So we ended up, we got like a whole crowd of people, people from New York, people from, you know, we from, I'm from Jersey, he from New York. So it's like New York, New Jersey. So then, uh, we go over to the hotel, and when we go over to the hotel, um, we got boxing gloves. It's a little, like, area. Got a boxing glove. I don't, I don't even think we had head gear on at the time. But, shit, we started sparring. When I say I fucked me up, <laughs> I fucked me up ass. Like, it's just because, like, he was talking so much shit. So it's like, 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 like right now, like, me, I'm cool. Like, I don't got no problem with him. Like, I think that he a bad motherfucker, too. But. I'm just like, give you a little story. Like, it's history behind this. Like, so he can sit there and say, like, all he want to say. But the history, you know, it's been a long time coming. So whenever it do happen, I'm on his ass. <laughs> like, <laughs> how, know, old were, how old were you guys when you guys were sparring there in a hotel? We, we sparred in a hotel. Actually, we didn't spar in a room. We sparred in the hallway of the hotel. It was like a little, little area. And I fucked him up, I swear. But, um... We sparred at, uh, how old was he? We was probably like, uh, probably like 15, 16. Okay, like 15. okay. Teens, okay, I got you, I got you. So, 
Could you see that fight? Could you see that fight at, at, at 130? That would be a, a really nice fight at 130 pounds. Yeah, yeah, I definitely could see that fight. That would be a big fight. Like, B, I've been putting on great performances. I don't take nothing away from it. I don't think, like, a lot of people going to have trouble with B. I I think B, I've been a, a real good fighter. I just think that it's level, like, it's level when they come to boxing. Like, I know what he don't know. That's all I'm going to say. I know what he don't know. Mm. Uh, any fear at all, Shakur, on your part that you won't get the big fights that you're looking for Considering how you know Bob Arum and and your your mentor and good friend Bud Crawford kind of went back and forth, and you know Bud even came on here and talked about, hey, if I'm not getting the fights I want, then maybe I have to walk away uh, from top rank. Then you saw Tia Fimo's fight go to a purse bid, and then he gets on social media and says, hey, congratulations, top rank. You just see your best fighter, you know, walk away and go on to fight on another platform any fear at all that you won't get those big fights that you're looking for considering what's happened recently? Yeah, I kind of, I kind of got a little fear of it, but um, I'm just trying to like keep my head level headed though. So I'm not really like trying to focus too much on it, but it's a little fear because of like, even with Bud's situation, I don't feel that like, like with Bud, I feel like he, he want the big fights. Like it's not him. That's the problem. Like when it comes to, uh, one in big fights and stuff like that. He's not standing in the way. It's not him. It's not. Uh, I don't even think it's like uh Bob Aaron or nothing. I think that the fighters have to sign up and say, you know what, I want to fight him, and he or he gonna line up and say, I want to fight him, and I think that's how like the big fights supposedly supposed to happen. But I don't look at it like it's a promotional uh issue. I think that uh Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder just for it. Uh, I don't think that it's too hard to make a big fight happen. All you gotta do is tell whoever in charge or, or, or the promoter or whoever that you want to fight this person in. That's what it is. Like, if I really want a, a big, big fight, I'm going to sit down with Bob as I do and tell Bob, like, yo, make this fight happen and whatever we got to do, let's do it. And then that other fighter had to go tell whether it's Al or uh, Eddie or Golden Boy, whoever, Oscar De La Hoya, that y'all want these big fights too. And uh, if we all agree, I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to make. Um, you, 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 you talked about Bud, uh, who do you think should be Bud Crawford's, uh, next fight? I know Sean Porter was here on the show. He said he would love to fight, uh, Bud, but you say Bud's style is wrong, uh, for Sean Porter. So who do you think should be Bud's next opponent? I think there's only one fight that Bud need to have next. I think, uh, it's Earl Spence. I think that Earl and Bud is made for each other. I think they need to uh, get past whatever. Um, they got going on. Uh, Earl got to stop with the uh, 70 30. Like, I understand business, I get it, but uh, I got love for Earl too. I don't got no, you feel me? It, it's love for Earl too, but I'm just saying, like, 70 30 is like kind of pushing it when Bud is like been a champion for seven straight years, like 135, 140, 147. Like, you got to pay that man, he's undisputed champ. Like, you got to pay that man his respect too. So, um, like I said, uh, that's the only fight I really want to see. Terrence Crawford versus Bud, I mean, versus uh, Earl Smith. I think that's the biggest fight in boxing. And, and how difficult would that fight be for you, considering your relationship with Errol? And, you know, he's always talked glowingly about you. And then, you know, Bud is your guy, too. Man, how difficult is that? will that be for you to watch that fight? I mean, I don't think it'd be too difficult. I think I'll sit right there as a fight fan and uh, just enjoy it. Like, I'm, I'm really, like, a boxing fan. Like, I love watching boxing. Um, I would enjoy, like, the tactics and, like, everything that they do, like, the mental game. and uh, Just to see, like, that kind of level, like, I would love to see it, like, like clash. Like, I would love to see them two top-level fighters get in the ring and fight. So, I think I'll just be a student of the game right there. And, and, and you know, people want that fight so bad. Do you think it, it it's a fight that will happen? Or do you, uh, do you get a sense that maybe – PBC is waiting to see if whether or not Bud is going to re up with top rank. And if he doesn't re up with top rank this year, like, Hey, okay, now we can make that fight as opposed to trying to do it while he's with top rank. I kind of do get that sense that uh, PBC is like kind of waiting and kind of thinking that uh, Bud probably don't sign back with top rank. They probably want Bud to come over there with them. And uh, I understand it. Like it's all business at the end of the day. So I get it, but. I just think that that fight is like a long time coming. Like they both in their proms right now. Um, I don't want to see them fight three years from now. Like right now is actually the time for them to be fighting. So 
I just feel like that they just need to get over whatever issues is stopping that fight from happening and make a lot of money in and make boxing look good. Uh, you know, another uh, fight uh, and a guy who's, you know, under that top ranked banner is Loma. And he's, you know, obviously you haven't seen him since the Tiafimo fight, but all of a sudden he and Devin Haney have been going back and forth uh, on social media. Uh, do you see that uh, as a fight that, that could happen this year? I'm not, I'm not too sure. Uh, I got to see, like, I don't know. I'll, I'll be a little jealous of that fight though. Cause I'm calling out Limachenko name constantly. And it's like, he just act like he don't see me. Like, he don't, he don't even want to say nothing to me, but he, like, speaking to, to Devin and all that. But I I, I mean, I would, I, would, I would like to see the fight, though, as a, as a fight fan, too. But I just know, like, it's like, it's certain things I pay attention to. Like, I got on TV and said, Lomachenko, what up? Like, I got on TV not too long ago, said it, and even tweeted it, all that. He don't say nothing. Like, yeah, like, he don't see me, but. You speak up when you feel me, like so. I see, like I see what's going on. That's why I try to tell you when I say I'm the boogeyman. Like, it's certain things I pay attention to. I pay attention to stuff like that. So, um, I do want to see that fight though. I, I would like to see uh Devin in like a a big fight too. Like uh Devin, my friend, I got a uh, love for Devin too. So, I want to see Devin in a, a a big fight that he can make a lot of money too. And have you gone to Bob and and or Todd? their top rank because Loma is there under the same promotional banner and say, Hey, look, let's make this fight. I know when we had Tia Fimo on, he was like, yo, it was a good fight, but I think Loma needs to stay at one thirty. Uh, exactly. guys up at one thirty five. We, 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 we hit too hard. We too big for him. I mean, I mean, you and Loma would be unbelievable. Have you, have you approached Bob about trying to get Loma to do a fight with you? Yeah, I did. Last time, uh, uh, I did. They was telling me that, um, Lomachenko, it's saying that 135, he don't want to go back down to 130. But I don't, we all feel like he should be at 130. Like that's the weight class that um, you did everything you did and, and you was a, a great at that weight class. So I think you should come back down and come get your ass beat. <laughs> and, and if, let's say if you talk to Bob and he say, hey, we can make the fight, but he wants to do it at 135. Is that something you would entertain going up? I don't, I don't know. I don't know because I just moved up from uh, 126. So, like, I watch. I don't know. Like I, I, like I told you, I watch certain shit. Like, I watch uh, AB. He jumped up two weight classes from 35 to 47, and it ain't, like, turned out too good. Like, even though, like, I feel like, like, skill-wise, I got all the talent to do certain things. I just think that was best for my career is um, me clean up the division at 130 and then go to 135. But, I mean – if it make money, it makes sense. So depending on how much money they talking about, I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to give you two answers with that. Maybe. <laughs> maybe so. so. And we'll wrap up Loma with this. This is your opportunity to talk to him now. What would be the incentive? What would be the reward for Vasily Lomachenko to fight Shakur Stevenson at 130 pounds right now? I think that um, it'll be a big reward. I think that he just lost to one young, hungry lion. Uh, it's another one that's called your name, too. And if you come back and try to, you know, beat this one, then it'll look good. It'll look like like what you were saying was right. That um, Well, not what he was saying, what everybody else was saying um, with the 135, that the weight was the problem. It'll look like that if he can – come do that but I promise you there's no way that he could do that like it's impossible I would not let him be me. ain't no way ain't no way a scared man could be me. <laughs> I, I, I feel like there was a lot of fear in that tier female fight and I just don't think a scared man could be me. um I, I saw that you were in uh Miami recently and you know you were at the Canelo fight and you had a quote where you said I'm a huge Canelo fan tell me why I think that Canelo is one of the best boxers in boxing. I think that uh, right there with Bud, Earl, uh, skillfully, like, Canelo is just on a different level. Like, he just do things that I just like. Like, I could sit there and say, okay. Like, don't get me wrong, that dude that he fought wasn't that good. Like, everybody complained about the opponent. I get it. But, like, being right there to watch Canelo in person, my first time ever seeing see him in person, and seeing, like, the patience from a fighter, seeing, like, the, the sharpness, the skills, and 
somebody who actually like know what they doing. Like certain times you'll go watch like main fighters and like I ain't gonna disrespect and throw no names out there, but you'll watch main fighters and see them like skills and be like, they not really that good, but they got a strong punch or whatever it is. But if you watch Canelo, you can sit there and see like the skills from Canelo. Canelo have real skills. I don't know what he learned from Floyd, but it kind of carried him throughout his career now that he's just picking up on more and more things. Like he got great waist movement. I seen the patience. I seen the creativity. Like he throwing the arm in the air, coming with an uppercut, uh, pulling back, coming with like it's it's a, it, it was real creative watching him fight. So um a lot of people don't like Canelo, but I think that Canelo is a bad man, like yeah, hell of a fighter. Mm. And, and when you look at the greatest fighters right now, I mean, you you know, Bud, you you've seen Ben. Where where would you say Canelo ranks right now? I think that um, Bud and Canelo is one and one. I think that I I I actually put Bud probably over uh Canelo to be honest, but Canelo like right there, like skill wise, Canelo know what he's doing. Like yeah, he a real skillful fighter. Very good. Um, you know, you, you mentioned it earlier. Obviously, you're a Jersey kid from New Jersey, uh, proud to be from Newark. But now you you live in Houston. You live in Texas. Man, that place got punished by that storm. How did it affect you? It affected me. Um, some uh, My family was down there with me. My mother, the lights was off. The electricity was off. It was cold in the house. Um, it, it, it affected me some, but it was cool. Yeah, yeah, but the power's back on and everything is, is good now with the family? Yeah, everything is back on. Everything's running smooth, and um, I'm, I should be home uh, probably tomorrow. Oh, good. That's fantastic. This segment of the show is brought to you by Man Cave Health. It's a public charity that raises awareness nationwide for prostate cancer. Many of you know I battled prostate cancer, and it had it not been for me, taking a PSA test, you know, the doctor told me I could have been dead uh, within a year. 30,000 men die every year from prostate cancer simply because they didn't know their number. They didn't get an annual check. And also, do you know one out of every four black men are diagnosed with prostate cancer? My question to you, Shakur, how important is your health to you? I think that, uh, my health is very important, especially being a, a athlete and um, a boxer at that, a professional athlete. Um, so my health is very important. And um, I'm glad that you brought this up to me because I'm going to start also um, start going to get a physical uh, once a year, too. So uh, I'm going to get on top of that. And uh, my health is very important, though. And, and, and has anyone in your family, whether it be you know, a grandfather who obviously very close to you from training aspect, uncles, father, anybody ever been diagnosed with prostate cancer? No, but I'm definitely going to talk my uh, grandfather, because my grandfather, my coach, I'm going to tell my grandfather in the, uh, going to like get um, physicals and uh, get checked up and stuff like that. But I don't, um, he, 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 he's, he's good. Like everything is straight. So. And that's great. And, and, and that led into my my next question. Do you think that if you weren't a professional athlete and obviously having uh, to get checked out annually, do you think you would be just as diligent going to the doctor at least once a year or ma and making sure your grandfather and those guys, uncles are going to the doctor as well? Uh, yeah, most definitely. I think that I, if I wasn't like, you feel me, training all the time and uh, focusing on that, I think that I definitely would um, be doing that all the time. So, um, but even though, like, even though I am, now that you said I'm going to make sure, like, I'm going to give him a call as soon as we get off the phone and make sure I check on him and stuff like that. So, the mission for Man Cave Health is to encourage all men to take just one hour out of the year to either get a physical and a PSA test. And with donations from people just like you, you can help other men who maybe don't have the resources to pay for a PSA test or a physical exam. All you've got to do is go to the Man Cave Health website at mancavehealth.org and sign up for their free newsletter. It is a great resource. And please make a donation because this public charity is trying to make sure that all men 
can get a physical and a PSA test. And all you've got to do to donate to this public charity is text the last stand to 44321. Shakur, you know the deal. Everyone who comes on the show, we allow uh, people who watch it to submit questions. We always get a number of them when you're on. So let's get right to them. Uh, this first one comes from Twitter. Uh, and it says, after seeing how Bob uh, did with Tia Fimo's bidding, does that make you think about your own worth, especially when your contract is up? I mean, I ain't really thinking too much about what my contract up right now. We focus on the, uh, the present. Uh, we locking in on right now on, on my fight. And uh, I'm happy for Tio, though. At the end of the day, Tio um, got a good run for whatever um, whatever they gave him with that. And I think he deserved it after that fight with Lomachenko. So. Next uh, question from Twitter. This one asks, can you see yourself beating some of the champs at the higher weight class, 135, right now? Yes, I do. I see myself uh, being a lot of, uh, every one of them at 135. I think that uh, I'm a different kind of fighter. I think that my skills is on a whole different level. And like I said, it's levels to this boxing. So I think I, I'm better than all of them. Wow. So you can see yourself, whether it's Ryan Garcia, whether it's Tank David, you can see yourself fighting them cats right now and getting it on. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I think that um, that would be perfect for me. That's fine with me. I think that uh, my skills carry on to the next week. Last so. um, It says here, next one from Twitter. Uh, what do you think you have? Uh, do you think you would have to leave top rank in order to take your career to the next level? Uh, no, I think that um, top rank is already making my career on the next level. I think that Tyrank is doing a great job with me. Um, ESPN is also chiming in, helping out. So I think that they're doing a great job as of right now, and I think everything is good. Like I think that my career is going to keep getting better and better. Um, I'm still just 23 years old, so they got give me some time. Uh, this one from Twitter as well. It says, Shakur, what's the boxing style that you feel would showcase your potential if someone was, were to see you fight for the first time? I don't know. Uh, that's kind of hard. Probably a, a like a, a banging style, like an Oscar Valdez come forward. I think that if me and him fight, I'm going to be able to show a lot of my skills and uh, I'm going to be able to shine as much as possible. So I think maybe that kind of style. Shakur Stevenson, it's time for the last segment of the show. We call it The Last Stand. You know the drill. I'm asking you a series of questions. You give me the first thing that comes to your mind. You ready, champ? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, here we go. First thing that comes to your mind when I say Canelo Alvarez? Um, defense. Mm. Like his defense, huh? Yeah. Uh, do you seriously believe that Errol Spence and Bud Crawford will fight this year? No. Mm. Uh, they're calling the lightweight division the four kings, Tiafimo, Ryan Garcia, uh, Devin Haney, Tank. In your opinion, who's the best fighter out of all four of them? Uh. <laughs> 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 no, nah, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I can't really answer that one. I don't know. Oh, you I told me there was <laughs> levels to this thing. I know you know. <laughs> I see you. You you've been with Devin. You just sparred with Tank. You you. I know you know. <laughs> now, I think that I think that um they all great fighters. Um, it's hard. It's really hard to say when they not like in front of each other. I think that uh, Teal is a really good fighter. Tank is a really good fighter. Devin is a really good fighter. Like, uh, it's hard to say. Like, I can't really just sit here and tell you like without them. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of a boxer, you ought to be a politician. The way, the way, <laughs> look, the way you parried and moved and slipped with that question. <laughs> okay, give me the one fighter, not named Shakur Stevenson, who's the next pay per view star. Not named Shakur Stevenson, next pay per view star. Keyshawn Davis. Oh, 
how about that one? Oh, yeah. okay. You got a young buck in there. Okay, I like that one. Yeah. Uh, last but not least, Shakur Stevenson will be a two-time world champion by when? Shakur Stevenson will be a two-time world champion by September. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I like it. I tell yeah. you, that's what we do here on The Last Stand. We bring you the biggest names in the sport like none other than Shakur Stevenson. Man, I appreciate you again, man. I can't wait to see you back in the ring and can't wait to see you fight for the world title because I think a lot of people are wanting to see you with that strap back around your waist. I appreciate you too. <laughs> that's what we do on The Last Stand. We bring you the biggest names like Shakur Stevenson. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you again next week.